The winner of the 2024 Sophie Kerr Prize goes from one Sophie to another. <laughs> Um, it's kind of hard to pinpoint. I, my parents were very adamant about, about reading to me, even like when I was a little baby, my dad, um, he, cause babies don't know, know words yet. Uh, so he would just read me T.S. Eliot or whatever he was into, um, because I didn't, I didn't know what he was reading. Um, I was not a baby who liked to sleep. So he, he would read to me to get me to go to sleep. Um, so books and, and language and, and writing has always been a massive part of my life. My dad was a poet when he was in college. Um, I was primarily a fiction writer for like most of adolescence. I went to um, a magnet program in high school for writing, and I, I was very like novel focused. I wanted to I wanted to write my novel. Um, and then when I was about seventeen or eighteen, I I fell into poetry sort of by accident, um, and that has been my focus since. Yeah. Well, I um, when I was like fourteen, fifteen, I was adamant that I never wanted to write poetry. Um, I didn't like under, I didn't understand it, which is like I guess a little bit typical of a, a teenager. Um, it it just felt very out of out of reach for me. And then, um, as I'm sure is kind of the case for a lot of young poets, um, I fell into Mary Oliver when I was about 16, uh, and she uh, is just brilliant and changed everything. Um, and she, I, right as I was, I was, I was sort of beginning to see myself as someone who maybe could write poetry, um, that was when she passed away. Uh, and everyone in our, in our literary arts class, I think this was our senior year, we just sat and we were reading Mary Oliver and we were talking about it and uh, reflecting on her work, um, which was really special for me. And I, I think poetry as um, this community unifier um, is really valuable to me and is, is something that's become a comfort to me. Uh, in a way that fiction just wasn't. Yeah, I, um, it's something I, I struggle to talk about a little bit because I never want to come across as ungrateful. I, I think my high school um, gave me a lot of early tact and, and skill as a writer and as an editor, but ultimately it was just a place that fostered a lot of competition and um, sort of butting heads and, and uh, positioning yourself as uh, the opponent to other writers as opposed to writing in community with one another. I don't think, especially just in general, teenagers are naturally pretty conflictual um, and there's a lot of just tension there by nature of being 16. Um, and so I think when we were in that program, there was only 15 of us, um, we all very much saw each other as competition and... Uh, I, as I got older and as I was coming out of that program and realizing that I really wasn't in contact with most of them anymore because of um, that conflict, it felt like more of a loss to me than anything. Like it really did just feel like, okay, like I'm coming out of this and I'm not like a best-selling author. I'm not making a bunch of money off of my writing. Like nobody knows who I am, but I also like gave up community and friendship and, and camaraderie for the sake of like a hypothetical like literary success that isn't like attainable to anyone really. Um, and I think my focus has always been community but really became community when I was coming out of that and um, realizing that it just was super restrictive and unpleasant to be constantly fighting for fighting for my spot and fighting for the chance to express myself and uh, to platform my voice um, and I didn't want to be somewhere where I was going to have to keep doing that. That's just not something that interests me. I'm just in general, I'm not, I'm not a huge like accolade resume person. Um, I, I do what I have to, I have a LinkedIn, um, but I like, I could not tell you my GPA. I don't like keep track of things like that. I'm much more interested in like conversationality and like the creative end of, of doing work. Um, and I, I had come to Cherry Tree here when I was in high school, the Young Writers Conference, and I remembered it as this place that was just so devoted to fostering, fostering that community and fostering conversation and uh, dialogue, and that was what I wanted. And I had already had a relationship with um, a couple of a couple of students who had been interns at the conference that year, and with Dr. Hall here at the Lit House, and. 
it was just really clear to me that if I, I wanted that community and if I wanted that like intentionality, it was going to be at a place like Washington and not at, at some big university that wants you to think that it's like the place for writers or anything like that. Uh, yeah, I am getting my creative writing MFA. I'm poetry concentration at the University of Massachusetts in Boston starting this fall, um, which is scary, um, very exciting. I am now feeling much less terrified about rent money, so that's, that's really good. Um, uh, yeah, I'm really excited. I, Dr. Hall has been uh, an incredible advisor with that whole process and uh, trying to, I was going to take a gap year originally and he really pushed me and said, no, I think you can do this now.